This video is brought to you by YT Andrew Paul Tech Repairs. If you have a console, laptop, computer or Macbook in need of repair in the UK or the EU then have a look in the description below this video for details on how to contact us in order to organise your repair. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be taking a look at a PS4 error code SU dash 30631 3 this is an update loop error uh, which is sometimes described as being caused by a bad USB or a corrupt system software installation download uh, but sometimes of course despite no matter what you try you can't get rid of the issue and sometimes that's because the issue is down to corrupt contents within the flash of the PS4 system itself today we're going to take a look into how we can actually repair that issue and how we can get things back up and running again. Now before we start I'm just going to have a quick disclaimer here just to sort of put a few things aside because this is a very technical repair, this is uh, a tricky thing to get your head around, this is something which if you aren't careful uh, it can render your PS4 irrevocably bricked and to such an extent, it's important that you understand exactly what's going on here uh, at each step uh, along the way so that you can make sure that you do this accurately, correctly and get things working first time rather than risking something bricking your PS4 because sometimes it's not as simple as just flashing back the old uh, contents of the chip. This can do some permanent irreversible damage. So it's important that before we start, that is laid down to begin with. Now to this extent, because it's important you understand exactly what you're doing, and I try to make videos which I would have found useful when I started messing with this stuff, to that extent what I'm going to be doing is explaining this every step of the way because obviously it's important you understand it, never mind being able to just repeat monkey see monkey do, that isn't good enough. Uh, so consequently this video is probably going to be fairly long. How long? I don't know because I'm going to record this as I'm going along and explaining it and doing it. Now, there always seems to be some comedian in the YouTube comments who says, Ah, oh, how did that take an hour? Blah, 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 blah. If that's you, don't bother. Just click off. You don't like it, don't watch it. Doesn't bother me. At the end of the day, we're here to learn, we're here to explain, and this is complicated, it's tricky, it's difficult, and this can do some permanent damage to your machine. Consequently, I'm going to take my time, I'm going to make sure everybody understands it, and if that takes me an hour, so be it. Don't bother being a smart ass in the comments. Just don't bother. With that said, let's show you what the PS4 does at the moment, and then we'll come back here and we'll get it fixed. Okay, hello there ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's video. And I'm without the external microphone at this point. We're going to take a look at this PS4 that's stuck in an update loop. And uh, we'll just let it go through at the moment. So as soon as you turn it on, it comes up to this screen and then it tries to install the update file and falls over. So we'll see in a second what it does. And there you go, so we sped that last bit up there, but as you can see, we have an SU30631-3. Uh, all this will do now is it will turn itself off, we can turn it back on, and it will loop around. So uh, this is caused by a corruption in the flash, and uh, we'll get the flash chip out of the machine, we'll plug it into the computer, uh, and we'll show you where the corruption is and how you can fix it. Right, okay then, ladies and gentlemen, so you've seen there, uh, what our PS4 console is doing. So when we start it up, it automatically goes into the system software update. Uh, after a short time, I think it's around 58-59% if memory serves correctly. You've just seen it, of course. I'm trying to work from memory. Um, but yes, it just goes around and eventually quits with the error SU30631-3. It will reboot, it will retry, and it will do that until the cows come home. It'll never, ever change and consequently you can power it down you can restart it it's not going to make any difference it's just stuck now 
before we get into this particular repair, I'm just going to sort of put this out there. Sony's official recovery method for this particular issue is as such to make sure that your system software download is present and correct and that it's not corrupt. It's not sort of like a half downloaded file that you've bodged onto your USB stick because it's quit halfway through without you realizing. All that sort of stuff is possible. It does happen. If you've downloaded it, I implore you to download it again and retry. If you're using a USB stick to manually update the system software via safe mode, again, try a different USB stick, reformat your existing USB stick, put the update back on, try it again. Sometimes this can be down to uh, a corrupt or damaged hard disk drive. Again, if you've been seeing things like slowdown in FMV, your system has been a bit funky to start up every now and again, uh, things tend to crash and freeze a little bit on your machine. Again, it could be down to a bad hard drive. This particular error message could be down to a bad hard disk drive. If that's you, then of course, you know, go ahead and do the things that you would do to troubleshoot a bad hard disk drive. So you can put it into win you can plug the disk into Windows and do a surface uh, scan on it to see if there's any bad sectors. Uh, there's a piece of software that I recommend for doing this sort of thing with, which is called HDAT2, which is available at HDAT2.com. A link to that is going to be in the description of this video. Again, give you a disk a test with that, see if it finds any bad sectors. At some point, I am going to do a tutorial on HDAT2. It's something I've been meaning to do for absolutely donkeys now, uh, because it's excellent for... Um, either determining whether a hard disk drive is good or bad. It's also quite good at recovering uh, sort of lightly damaged disks, um, which is obviously quite useful. Um, so that is something that I have been meaning to do for a long time. It's something I will get around to doing. As and when I do, I'll update the description or put a pinned comment in there somewhere with a link to where you can find that. If it's not there at the moment, it's not something I've got around to yet. So give me a nudge in the comments or something, and that's definitely something I want to do for you. But again, you know, if you've got a spare hard disk drive, I think the minimum required in the PS4 is 160 gigabytes. It's SATA based and it's two and a half inch or laptop size. Uh, so obviously, if you've got one of those kicking around, stick it in, give it a try. You've nothing to lose at this point. It'll boot into safe mode if it's a different disk. You'll have to download the uh, full system software update from PlayStation.com, place it on a USB, put it in the console, try and update it. If obviously you've still got the same error, and at this point you've tried a different USB stick, you've tried re-downloading the file, you've tried a different hard drive, then chances are this particular issue that we're going to be looking at today is the fault that you're experiencing. Now, YouTube, since the last time I uploaded some videos, has put this nifty chapter um, thing in. So what I'm going to try and do is separate this down into chapters. So... We've got the disclaimer out of the way, so that the smart asses don't need to bother with their stupid comments. <laughs> we've, we've explained what's happening. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to explain the prerequisites you're going to need, because there's some equipment, as well as your laptop or PC, that you're likely watching this on now. There's some other things that you're going to need besides that to fix this particular fault. After that, we'll go through, we'll fix the error, and then we'll show you it working. And that's it. Then we're done. Okay? So... If you already, you know, you've already done a little bit of this sort of work, if, for example, you've done work previously on PS4 Wi-Fi corruption within the NOR flash, stuff like that, if you're a business, you've likely already done that sort of repair, you've probably already got the kit, you already know this next bit, feel free to skip ahead. Okay? If you haven't, and you're completely virgin to any of this, then I implore you to listen on. Like I said, this may take a while, but everything I say here is important. And it shouldn't be skipped, okay? If you've never done this work before, it might take a while to explain, but it's important. I wouldn't be putting it on this video if it wasn't. I try to make videos which I would have found useful when I started doing this sort of thing. The things that I couldn't find answers to that I had to learn, sometimes the hard way. I'm putting this out there now so you don't have to, okay? Now... If you haven't already done this sort of work, there are some prerequisites that you're going to need. So obviously you're going to need some sort of Windows-based laptop, desktop PC, whatever. Okay, but you're obviously going to need that. You might be watching this on a phone or a tablet, but you're going to need access to some form of computer. Okay, the next thing you're going to need is some way to actually remove the North Flash chip from your PlayStation. So this is a little IC which contains, uh, it's essentially flash memory, contains some basic 
um, startup information for your PS4, store some persistent settings. It's important because this is essentially a BIOS chip. If you think of a normal machine, that's essentially what this thing is. Without it, your machine won't boot, it'll just be dead. So consequently, the information on there is incredibly important. It's unique to your PlayStation the world over. You can't just sort of lose it, take one off another machine. It's not going to work. So don't lose it. Treat it with care and be careful with the information on there. The next thing we're going to need, once you've got a way of getting it off, so I'd recommend a hot air station, a PCB specific hot air rework station, some basic soldering tools, so soldering iron, flux, solder of the leaded variety, uh, preferably some form of desolder wick, desolder braid, a pair of tweezers for picking the, the chip off the board, etc. You know the game. The next thing you're going to need is some form of programmer. Now, obviously it's a little chip. We need the information off that chip onto our PC. The way we get that is to interface it with a USB based programming device. Depending on which machine you have depends on your options you have available. OK, so if you have an old PS4 fat console, so a 1000, a 1100 or a 1200 series machine, then if you've got a TNC 2.0 plus plus kicking around, which is what I use, then obviously you can use that uh, programmed with a piece of software called SPI way to actually dump the information from those PS4s no flash chips onto your machine, but it only works for those earlier fat consoles. If you have a PS4 Pro or a PS4 Slim, then you need a completely different type of uh, programming device. And that's because the SPI way software doesn't support the newer flash chips found on the PS4 Slim or the PS4 Pro. The last time I checked, it hadn't been updated. Maybe it has now. I'll have a check before, you know, when I upload this video, just to make sure, but at the current point, as far as I'm aware, that hasn't changed. I don't think it's technically in development anymore. I think it's it's long by the wayside, but I will check. But if not, then you're going to need a different programming device. Now, I don't have any experience with using any of those because I used to have an old Willem V4 USB based programmer back in the day when I was messing around with Xbox 360s. Uh, perhaps that will still work. I don't know. Um, but there is some um, cheap Chinese generic USB programming devices which are freely available on eBay, AliExpress, all that sort of stuff. I'll find one. I'll put the link below or at least like, you know, the serial number, the model name of the thing that you're looking for. Then you can find them wherever it is that you want to buy it from. But they're cheap. They're plentiful. Uh, how you use them, the software and the stuff that you use to install and extract and reprogram the, the devices, I'm not aware of. It's not something I have. It's not something I use because I've never had to do any of this type of work before on a PS4 Slim or a PS4 Pro. Um, it's not something I personally get the call for, so I've never invested in the kit. It's cheap. I know that at some point I probably will buy it because it's useful to have. Um, again, as and when I do, I'll put an updated um, sort of addendum to this tutorial again in the description and maybe in a pinned comment below if it's not there it's not something I've got around to yet my apologies again if it's say, six months down the line and it's not there give us a nudge I'll quite happily look into it and, and see what I can do um, but either way whether you use the TNC or whether you're using the other USB based programming devices whether that's through choice because of course those uh, generic Chinese programmers should also work for the older fat machines as well as the newer slim and pros whereas the teensies will only work for the older fats so depending on which whichever choice you you go with and whether you're going to be using SPI way with the TNC or you're going to be using whatever software is bundled with your particular USB programmer the end result is ultimately going to be the same you're going to end up with a binary file the, ex the exact same whichever method you use to extract it from the flash chip with. So whether you use the TNC or the USB, you know, cheap Chinese generic USB programming device, you're going to get one binary file that's exactly the same. No matter which hardware, which software you use, it's going to be exactly the same. The repair process from that point forward is exactly the same. How you get the data off the chip is what varies. But basically, if you take a look down at the chapters, I'll separate it out for you. And like I say, you can just skip to the relevant bit. So because I've got a TNC and this is for a fat PS4, I'm going to show you how you can use the TNC programmer and SPI way to dump and rewrite the chip. OK, on this particular video. Now, if you're using one of the cheap generic Chinese 
USB programming devices, that's where this is going to vary slightly. But the actual process of repairing the fault and getting into the hex code and, and patching it up is the same. So with that said, let's get on and let's get this sorted out. So I have the flash chip from the um, PS4 in question that we showed earlier on plugged into my uh, Teensy board. Now, if you wanting to use the Teensy because you have the older PS4 fat, I have a three part video tutorial series on how to repair uh, PS4 Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, nor corruption, which involves using the Teensy hardware. Now, if you have a 1000 series or an 1100 series PS4 and you want to use the Teensy programmer because you can either find one easier, you've got already got one for example, then take a look in the description of the video. I will put parts one and two, which are the ones you'll need, uh, down below. So I'd pause this video here because otherwise it's not going to make an awful lot of sense. Uh, part one describes the hardware and the sockets and everything else that you'll need. Um, to actually get this to work. It will also describe a small hardware modification to make the TNC so that it outputs 3.3 volts to the uh, header rather than five volts. It doesn't really matter. You'll get away with five volts um, to the NOR IC. It won't damage it, but it is a 3.3 volt device. So technically it should be done. Either way, all that information is contained in that part one video. The part two uh, basically goes through and explains how to program the TNC device with SPI way so you can use it to dump and then also explains the various bits and pieces of software you'll need. So like Pi Serial, uh, all that sort of stuff that you're in setting up SPI way uh, in command prompt. So basically you're getting to the point where you can then use that to dump. OK, so if you're going to use the TNC or you want to use the TNC, uh, for a 1000 or 1100 series, then those two videos are for you. If you have a 1200, again, you can still use the TNC and those two parts are still relevant. Uh, but part two does have an addendum. Again, the um, link is in the description if you have a 1200 series machine. Uh, and basically that's because that particular PS4 uses a different type of uh, flash memory. It's a different sort of package. So consequently, uh, the wiring diagram is slightly different and the um, socket, if you're wanting to use a socket, that is, is again different. So if you have a 1200 series machine, make sure you watch the addendum as well. Uh, but what we'll do from now on is we'll get on with the repair and we'll show you what we're going to do. So because I'm using a TNC, um, I'm going to use SPI way to dump this particular chip onto my laptop. So if you're using one of the cheap Chinese programming devices, uh, essentially, whatever software and method you use to dump the chip, I need you to do it twice. So you're going to take one dump, give it a name, and then take a second dump of the same chip, but you know, increment it. So let's call one dump one and one dump two. So it's the, you're just going to dump the chip twice. You're going to have two copies of that one dump. That's important for later on. OK, I'm going to do the same with the TNC. I'm going to dump this chip twice. So I have two copies of the same thing. And that's because we need to verify that the contents in flash that we have on our machine are correct, because there's a lot of encrypted information on that chip. Again, it's unique to each PS4 the world over. So we need to make sure that our one version of the truth for our particular machine is accurate and correct. And we can compare that later on once we have the dumps. But we need two copies of it to verify. OK, so we're just being safe by doing that. And you should do the same. So if you're using the TNC and you've watched the other videos I've linked in the description, we're going to use SPI way. OK, so that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to start SPI way. OK, now the command you're going to use with SPI way um, is dot pi. And like I say, if you're using TNC and you've watched the other videos in the series, you'll understand all about these commands. OK, so SPI way dot pi. Essentially, SPI way needs uh, to know what COM port the TNC hardware is on. OK, now that's um, essentially the TNC acts as a serial programming device. So it essentially presents itself as a as a device on a COM port. OK, so 
in Windows 10, you just go into Device Manager, same on Windows, well, whichever version of Windows you like, really, you just go into Device Manager. On, a, on all the versions of Windows, Windows 7, Windows XP, etc., that's in the Control Panel. Uh, with Windows 10, you can just right-click the Start button and go into Device Manager, but you probably recognise it. Uh, under Ports, Common LPT, you can see there that our USB serial device, the giveaways in the name, is on COM port 3. Okay. So we're going to use COM port 3 because we know that's what it's currently communicating on. Okay, and then we're going to do space and info. And info basically verifies to us that we can see our chip and it's available to be either dumped, erased, or written to. Okay, so we can see here, look, uh, once we ask the TNC to give us information about the chip that's currently installed into its socket, we can see that we've got a Mechronics MX25L25635F. It's 32 megs in size, it gives us the sector size, block size, blah, blah, blah. None of that's important, but as long as we get a result returned there, we're good. If we don't get any information back from the TNC, so example here, if it's a chip manufacturer and it's blank, chip type and it's blank, essentially there is a connection issue between your TNC and the chip. So if you've soldered the wires to the legs, check you've no loose joints, dry joints, etc. If you've got it in a socket, just sort of like take the chip out of the socket, clean the contacts, clean the legs, pop it back in, view on the command. Hopefully then you'll start to get some information out here. If you start to see some weird information, so let's say COM4, for example, you'll notice you get this trace back here. And that's basically because it can't communicate with the device because it's on the wrong port. So if you've got a few things listed under COM and LPT in Device Manager and you're not sure which one it is, just try each one in turn. Just change this number of each one in turn until you actually get a, an appropriate response. And then you know you're good. Like I said, if you see, uh, if it does return chip manufacturer chip type, but it's blank, then you've got the correct COM port, but it can't communicate with your chip for whatever reason. Okay. So you know your hardware and your drivers and your setup is generally good. It's just a, a literal connection issue that then you've then got a problem with. Okay. But in our case, we know we can see we're working absolutely fine. So I'm just going to clear the window, okay, so we just get rid of all the crap that was there before. So we issue the info command and we're getting the correct relevant response. So we can see our chip, our machine is talking to the chip, fantastic. So now we need the information from the chip onto our PC so we can see what's contained within. And to do that with the TNC, we're going to run spiway.py on COM port 3. We're going to change info though, and we're going to say dump space, and then we're going to give it a file path as to where we want um, our firmware image, our binary file with all the bits and pieces we need in it. We need to know where we want to store it on our PC. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this PC and we're just going to check we have a folder. Now, I do believe I have one on C, PS4 BIOS. YouTube. And that's the folder that I created on here for doing this sort of example. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it that I want to store these binary files in there. Okay. So all I do is I'm going to put some speech marks in there so that it understands any spaces or anything. So C colon backslash. Uh, this is yeah, so C colon backslash, it's on the C drive in a folder called PS4 BIOS and in a folder after that called YouTube. So we're just going to start typing. So if I type PS4 and hit tab, it knows I already have a PS4 BIOS folder. And then if I say YouTube and tab, it automatically populates the folder structure. So it saves me having to type it out. It's really quite cool. So basically what this is going to do, uh, if I then put backslash again, what I want to do now is give my dump file a name. So I'm going to call this Ovig for original, and I'm going to keep this safe, one. And I want two copies of this, remember. Uh, and you want to put a .bin extension on it, because it's a binary file. Okay, that's so we can open it up in HXD, which is the hex editor we're going to be using to take a look at the contents of the file once we've dumped it. So once I've done that and I'm happy, I'm going to hit enter. And that's going to go away and you can see at the bottom of this window now it says we're dumping and you can see the uh, numbers there going up 
as it goes through the chip and reads it and dumps it out into file. You can see in the folder, see PS4 BIOS YouTube, where we asked it to store our origone.bin file. You can see that file has now turned up. Okay, and we'll be able to watch this carry on. So we've around five megs dumped. We've got 32 megs to go in total. So I'll probably speed this bit up because there's nothing going on. I'm just waiting for that dump process to finish. It takes a couple of minutes usually. Oh, it's stopped. Ah. Doesn't normally do that. Um, it's probably it's probably something weird going on. It's probably a dirty contact or something. So what I'll do is I'll stop this. I'll clean my chip and uh, I'll reissue the command and we'll try it again. Hopefully then it'll go through. Bear with me. Right, okay. I don't know what the hell is going on, but I updated VirtualBox uh, last week, which is running my VM environment, so the machine I used to demonstrate all this stuff. Since then, for whatever reason, the USB drivers for the VirtualBox installation just seems to have crapped itself. So it's all running the latest version that's available, so there's not a lot I can do apart from sort of show you on my main machine. So that's what I'm going to do. So uh, spiway.py. So it's COM4 on my main machine. Um, if we issue an info, we can see there. Look. So we got the mechanics that we can see the chip type is correct, 32 megs in size, etc. etc. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to issue a command to spiway to dump our firmware chip. PS4 BIOS, uh, YouTube, and then of course remember we want to call it Ovig1.bin. We need two copies of this, so we'll we'll dump this, and then we'll make another dump called Ovig2.bin. Okay, so we hit enter, it goes away and it starts dumping. So when this is done, what I'll do is we'll probably speed this bit up so it goes all the way through, and then. Uh, You'll be able to see what it does. Um, so this is the point where, obviously, if you're not using a TNC and you're using one of the other sort of probably generic Chinese USB programmers, that you'll launch software that comes with that and do the dumping through that. Uh, but if you're using if you're using the TNC, um, then like I say, parts one and two of the video series I've linked in the description will explain a lot about how to install this and sort of get it up and running to be able to use it. So we'll skip this on, we'll let it go, and uh, we'll come back when the dump's finished. Right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see there, um, our TNC and SPI way has finished dumping the chip. We can see that indeed it has completed all 32 megs. Uh, it tells us that it's done and it tells us how long it took. So in our case, 2 minutes 46 seconds. Obviously, I didn't take that on the video because I sped it up. Uh, but then what we'll do is we'll do the same again, but we'll just change the file name this time to orig2.bin. So there, all I did was I pressed up on the keyboard to so the up arrow. In command prompt in Windows, that basically will sort of put the um, last issued command into the you know the cursor, so you can actually just go ahead and rerun it if you want to. At which point, I would just go back, change the file name, hit enter, and there you go again. So what that's going to do now is that's going to go away, and it's going to give us a second copy, a second binary file of the information contained within our chip. So if we take a look here, look in our folder, you can see now we have have an orig1 and an orig2.bin. So the orig2bin is currently dumping away.
Right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, so as we can see there, um, the second copy of our PS4 North Flash chip is now on our machine, and we can see here in our folder we have OVIG1, OVIG2.bin, they're both 32,768 kilobytes in size, so we're good to go. If you've been using a generic USB programmer, then of course this is the point where you will pick back up, so welcome back if you've been using something other than a TNC, because from this point forward, we're going to be looking at the software we're going to be using to find the fault and then ultimately doing the patching and the repairing before we rewrite our flashback chip. So uh, I'll move these files back onto my demonstration VM so we can show you what to do with the rest of the procedure. Right, okay then everybody, welcome back. And if you've been away using something other than TNC, then this is the point you'll rejoin us. And this is the point where we'll go on and continue to fix it. Regardless as to whether you were using TNC or uh, a completely different programming device, you will have the same result. So you'll have two copies of your PS4 nor flash dumped to your machine. Here we've called them OVIG1 and OVIG2. OVIG for original, so original 1, original 2. This is the completely original uh, version of the contents of your PS4 nor flash chip before we've touched it. And we're going to keep it that way. What we're going to do now is we're going to install some software on our virtual machine, which is going to enable us to sort of continue with the repair. OK, so there's two things that you're going to need on your virtual machine. You're going to need something called HXD, which is a hex editor. That's basically what will open these binary files we've just dumped. Uh, a free download available. Link is in the description. Just download it. It's just a, an executable, just a, a normal Windows installer. Download it, run it, install it, and then you should be okay. The second piece of software we're going to need is a fantastic piece of software written by uh, Betterway Electronics in Australia. They've written something called the BWE Validator for PS4, which is invaluable for doing this kind of work. So. Big, big thank you to those guys. Big shout out to them. Link to their website is in the description below. And uh, without them, this would be, well, not impossible because you wouldn't know where the hell to look. So thank you very much if you guys are watching. And uh, yeah, massive props to them. So show them some love. I think they've got a YouTube channel. I think if they have, I'll pop the link in the description. Um or likewise, but like I said, the, the website address and everything is down there. So their website is where we're going to get the the uh, BWE PS4 nor validator software. So what you're going to do is you're going to fire up a web browser, and hopefully this is going to work a hell of a lot better <laughs> than what um, than what the uh, what they call it. What the teens installation on this virtual machine worked earlier on. Those of you who skipped it, <laughs> we had some technical difficulties. A pain in the backside. So yes, anyway, so BWE, betterwayelectronics.com.au. Fantastic piece of software, this. So we're going to go straight to the download section. And as you can see here, first option there, P BWE PS4 nor validator. At the time of uh, recording this video, latest version is 1.6.2, which was released on the 21st of March. Oh, sorry, no, it wasn't. It was updated, reading the American date. It's the 18th of March, 2021. Okay, so uh, this will download as a, I think it's a RAR archive. Um, and the password is BWE. I think it's a RAR archive. Yes, it is. So basically, we're just going to click that and download it to our virtual machine here. And if we go into our downloads folder, okay, and we can see here look, that we have the download there. Now, I do have 7-zip installed on this virtual machine for opening these types of files, but for whatever reason, the file association doesn't seem to work. So <laughs> got to go back into um, 7-zip itself. I don't know why it does this. Sometimes it, it, I've noticed on my machines before it's done the same thing sometimes. So let's see if we can find it. See users downloads and BWE PS4 nor validator.ra. There we go. So we've opened the archive. 
in the archive there's basically two files there's the executable and the readme file so uh, we'll just extract that we'll put it in a place on a hard drive that we can find it easily enough so let's put it in c ps4 bios make a new folder name in there let's call it um bwe validator so okay let's extract it uh password of course was uh, uppercase b lowercase w uppercase e okay that should have extracted our download there so let's just go and see if indeed we can find it now we can indeed there it is so there's the executable file all right what's going on here Uh, okay, so for whatever reason, it seems to think it's. Um, I can assure you now that it is not in any way a virus or a threat. So if indeed your um, machine picks it up, I have to say on my main laptop that's also running Windows Defender, that doesn't at all happen. So I don't entirely sure what's happened there. Um, but that, I can assure you, is not a virus of any description so if you do get an alert it's a false positive just allow it to do whatever it wants to do okay so bwe ps4 no validator okay what we're going to do is we are going to take a copy of our original file so i'm just going to highlight it and you can either control c it or right click and copy and we're just going to paste it into the same folder as our BWE PS4 no validator. So wherever we extracted it to from the RAR archive when we downloaded it, we want to create a copy of our um, PS4 binary file in the same folder. Don't move it, create a clean copy. We don't really want to touch uh, ORIG1 and ORIG2. But before we do anything else, what we're going to do is we're going to run a comparison in HXD between our two copies. So basically, before we do a thing, before we touch anything, we need to make sure that the binary file that we're going to be using is an exact copy and an accurate copy of what's on the chip. So remember, we dumped it twice. OK, what we're going to do is we're going to open our original dumps. So ORIG1 and ORIG2 in our CPS4 BIOS YouTube folder. We're going to open both copies of the file OK, so you can see there we have ORIG1.bin and ORIG2.bin open. OK, we go to the analysis tab on the on the tool menu and go down to data comparison, compare, or you can hit control K on the keyboard. And that will give us an option here so we can give it two data sources. So essentially, we've got two tabs open, so it's going to default to the two open files in data source one and data source two. So you can see here we have our ORIG1.bin and our ORIG2.bin. What this is going to do is it's going to go away and check every single byte in that file is identical to the other file. What we should find is what we have there. Hopefully it's going to turn around and say the chosen files are identical. That's good. So providing they're identical, we're good to go. If they're not identical for whatever reason and it finds issues, Go away, delete both copies of the file, redump it twice, come back to HXD, do the comparison again. Don't continue until it says they're identical. OK, now we know it's identical. We know this file is good. OK, so what we can do is we can open the PS4 no validator. We're going to right click and run it as administrator in Windows 10. We're going to say yes, we want to allow it through the uh, UAC. Oh, no, it can't run under a virtual machine. That's a bit of a shame. OK, bear with me. <laughs> right, OK, ladies and gentlemen, so we're back on the main computer. <laughs> so none of this is going to be of an issue to you because you won't be using a virtual machine. I only use it because it's a really nice, clean, dedicated environment for me to demonstrate things to you. It's not cluttered. It's not full of crap. It's just really bare bones and it's nice to be able to use it for whatever reason today it's fighting me so anyway we're back to the main machine uh, but 
as we can see, we have our BWE PS4 nor validated.exe on our machine. Remember, if you get any sort of alerts from your antivirus, it's false positive. I can guarantee you now that this is not a virus. Okay. Uh, we have a copy of our OVIG1 binary file here. As you can see, I can open it in HXD. Uh, we've already checked it in HXD, of course, against our other dump. So we dumped it twice. We compared both dumps together to make sure they're identical, uh, they're, they're identical before we continue. That's important. We have, and of course, what we're going to do now, we're going to right click and we're going to run this as administrator. OK, and it's got to go away and we can see it's started up. It's checking for the latest version. OK. So you can see there now, look, uh, it's going to give you some information. So it tells us the file name, tells us the serial of our console, which I've blurred out in this particular instance. Um, you can see that uh, it tells you the actual model. So we're using a 1003A. Uh, the firmware version is 1.61. OK, so it's a really early machine. Um, but somebody's updated it. So I personally wouldn't. But there we go. Uh, MD5, okay, so we can do one, two, three, four, five, or six things, depending on what we want to do. So we can do some comparisons between dumps, we can do some patching, uh, which I think there are some patches for Wi-Fi, which sort of automates the process, which is quite cool. I've never used it, but apparently it does work quite well. Uh, we can enable, disable UART or IDU mode, we can extract... Uh, using a couple of various methods, or we can validate. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to use option six. So we're going to validate this dump. So all we do, we enter selection six and press enter. And as you can see now, it's going to go away and it's got to do quite a lot of things. I'm just going to expand that so you can see. It doesn't take it long, to be fair. Um, but you can see we have a lot of OKs in there, which is good. OK, it's nearly finished. It takes it around 30 seconds or so, if I remember rightly. There we go. OK. So do you want to upload the results? Completely up to you. You can say yes or no. Yes is useful to the developers. I've already um, sort of sent this dump to them before now. So uh, and there we go. So. It then pops this little HTML um, file up, which is held in the same folder as uh, the main executable and the binary file. So it keeps it there for prosperity, which is really nice. Uh, and let's go through it. OK, so essentially this sort of splits the dump uh, into loads of various different sections and then sort of tells you whether it thinks it's OK. And as I say, it, uses, it goes away and it compares it against loads of other dumps. So the more dumps they have available, like I said, they can hone in on what's good and what's not. So it makes it more accurate. So that's why I urge you to sort of, when it asks you yes or no, to allow it to do so. Because um, ultimately everybody benefits. So as I say, this goes away and it splits down each individual section of the flash into its own component parts. OK, so as you can see here. Um, we have lots of green ticks and everything is OK. Everything is OK. Everything is OK. And basically, all this is very, very nice. So CID, um, as we can see here, the console ID section is actually quite important because a lot of this is sort of uh, where the unique identifier for each PlayStation is. Now, if you have a machine that's blood, for example, quite often it's because if you've got no hardware issues on the board and the APU and the RAM and everything is fine, but it's still blodding, then what you can do is you can dump it and take a look in there. You'll probably find there's quite a bit of if quite a few warnings and danger messages in that section. And if that's the case, then you have a soft pick. Um, that's quite often what happens is the CID section. A lot of this stuff gets corrupted for blod. But anyway, that's by the by. Um, but it's quite useful to, to know. But as you can see, everything in our case is actually looking quite nice. Um, you can see as well in this UNK dynamic section, um, we have quite a few green ticks. OK. As you can see, so it starts there. And it goes down and we've got mostly green ticks. We do have one section that says warning and it's full of Fs. Now, it's important to say 
that essentially it categorizes. In fact, if we go back to BW itself, we can see where it says final count. We have OKs, warnings, danger, and unlisted. So unlisted basically means that BWE has never really seen it. It's got nothing to compare it against. It's, it's new information to it. So it can't judge one way or another, whether it's good or not. It doesn't know. Okay. Danger is where it thinks there is something critically wrong. Um, warning is just where it thinks there could potentially be something there. It's not expecting to see that result, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. Okay, and we'll go on to that again in a sec. And obviously, OKs are OK. It thinks it's good. OK, so lovely. So let's go back to our HTML view. And as I say, we can see there we have a warning here in UNK uh, Dynamic Section 50. It's full of Fs. OK, now what I will say is throughout this uh, UNK dynamic section, it's quite normal to see a couple of warnings in there. OK, so a couple of uh, rows of Fs isn't really a problem. I've checked a few dumps that I've had laying around and it's perfectly normal to find the odd row. Obviously, if you've got a lot, then there's potentially something at fault there. But if you've only got one or two or a handful, don't worry about it. But further down here is where we've got something interesting and it's the start of this section here core os now i don't know if you noticed while it was dumping through but here where it says core os alternative validation we have a danger okay now what that's saying is is that there is something going on here that it doesn't understand there's something going on here which is bad okay this is potentially the issue. And if we go into the HTML file, it gives us more information, which is really nice. So it doesn't just tell us that it's knackered. It tells us where it thinks it's knackered. And that is the important bit. And that's why this piece of software is invaluable. It's brilliant, in fact. I absolutely love it. So let's take a look. And we can see here it's picked four particular parts. OK, so it gives us what is seemingly a completely uh, random string of hex lots of zeros in it uh, and it says it's of length 0x e002 found offset 0x f01 triple f danger okay and then the same here so it's got another section it's found a third section it's found and four uh, so four parts of that particular container it thinks are completely wrong so what the hell does any of that mean okay this is where it's important to understand exactly what's going on here okay so we think we found something that's a potential problem but we don't know why okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look and see exactly what we think is going on so what it's saying is is that this part is in hex okay so this information this string here c3 and all those zeros is in our binary file in a place where it's expecting to see some other information OK, and what it's saying is, is that that section with all those zeros in it is going on for a length of E002. That's quite a long section. So in he that's basically a hex code saying, giving us a length. OK, so that's quite a lot. That's quite a big bit. A offset F0 on triple F. And basically what that is, is that's the address. So if you think where you live, your house has a, a number of an address on the street, same thing. So each line in flash has its own address. So what it's saying is, is at this particular location in flash, we have this information that goes on for this length inside the file. And that is not right. That's, that's not normal. Something there has erased that information and it's gone. So what can we do? Well, let's fix it. So we have a copy of our firmware on C. Uh, PS4 BIOS, YouTube. So we have, remember, our first two copies. What we're going to do is I'm going to make a third copy of this particular binary file. And I'm going to call it uh, patched. Dot bin. This is the one we're going to work on, OK? And I'm going to start this in HXD. OK, and what I'm also going to do is remember that this said the firmware it was on was 1.61, OK? 
I'm not sure how accurate that is because um, the update that this console is going to is 7.55. Uh, I could have pulled the hard drive and I could have checked to see in safe mode what version it was asking for, um, but I didn't. But as far as I'm aware, this machine was not on 161. But anyway, that's the version it says it was on. I don't know, it could be, but it seems a bit odd. Um, but anyway, I don't have a 1.61 dump, but I do have one that's close. I have a 1.62, which should be, I think. Okay, so I've gone away and found my copy of 1.62 that works in amongst my myriad of available working dumps. Okay, so there it is. So now I have two files open in HXD. I have patch.bin and I have my working 1.62 that I know is good. Okay, just as a quick explanation, so we can see here uh, our offset starts. So that's like the main line address. Okay, the last digit changes. So we can see here the last digit is always zero. Okay, because that's the line. But the last digit represents which block along the line we're talking about. So you can see it's a bit of a grid. So it's, it goes through 0 to 9 and then A to F. OK, so this first bit is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, OK, this bit is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. This bit is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, and so on and so forth to the end of the line, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, too many zeros. This last bit here is zero 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 f, okay, and so on and so forth. So if we just go to a random bit, just so hopefully you've definitely got this. Let's pick this line here, okay. So this line is zero zero three f six nine five, okay. This first section is zero zero f. Zero zero three F six nine five zero. This bit is zero zero three F six nine five one. This bit here is zero zero three F six nine five two. All the way to the end of here, which is zero zero three F six nine five F. Okay, we got it. Good. Okay, so let's go and see what's going on up here. So let's go back to the top of our file. And then let's go back into our HTML file. So what it's saying is there's a lot of nothing at this address. So let's go to that address, F01 triple F. So right click copy after we've highlighted it. Let's go back to HXD in our patch.bin, which is the file where, you know, it's our dump that we're working on. We're going to go to search go to or control G on the keyboard. Let's type that address into the offset box. Make sure hex and offset relative to is set to begin and then say OK. OK, now this is a bit of a strange one because you would think it would start up here, wouldn't you? No, no, uh, it's not. It's not that useful. It's the bit you're looking for is the last line in the window. Look down here, 00, zero F01 FF. And our address, of course, was F01 FFF. And we know F is the last bit on that line, on that address line. So of course it's this bit here. And look what it starts with. C3. Our line starts with C3. Doesn't it? And then loads of Fs. So let's go down then. What's underneath it? Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> and it'll go on a lot longer than that. This is a big bit of code that's zeroed out. This is definitely not right okay so let's just go back to the top where our corruption starts so as you can see c3 and a big old bit of a bit of zero there that's definitely not right so let's find the same bit in our working file so as i say i don't have a 1.61 dump i have a 1.62 now i haven't done this repair very often um but what I generally try to do is use a working file that's as close to the one that my machine is currently on. So I know my machine is on, well, it tells me it's on 161. I don't have a 1.61 dump, but I do have 1.62. So whether it 
needs the identical information or you know from your dump or whether it just needs something that's valid i don't know i suspect it needs something that's valid i don't think the console that i'm working on is on 1.61 i don't i know it tells me it is and it could be i haven't personally checked it but um it would seem very weird for a PlayStation at the moment to be on 1.61, especially when the user is currently trying to update it to 7.55. That's the firmware version that's currently trying to install on the machine. Um, anyway, so let's go to the same section in our working file. And we can see here that it starts for A. So let's get it to the top of the window. So our section here, as we can see, F01, FF. F, of course, we know is the last. Uh, bit in that file, on that line, and we can see ours starts 4A, but look at everything underneath it. It's full of code. Look at that. Okay, so we know that's where our corruption starts in our file. It starts in this at the end of this bit here, FFF, which is going to start C3. That's the bit it identified, and all these zeros. So, what we're going to do, let's patch that out. So it says it has a length 0xe002. That's a big old bit of lot. That's a big old bit of block of code, is that? So what we're going to do? We're going to copy that e002. Going to go back into hxd. We're going to go down. So we're going to make sure our cursor is on f 01 f We're going to edit. We're going to select block. So our start offset is our address that BWE has identified, which is this. Okay. And our length, so we're going to select the length, and we'll paste in our E002. Or you can type it, whatever you prefer. Make sure hex is set at the bottom. Say OK. Right, OK. So it selects that block of code now, as you can see. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hold Shift so I'm holding the shift key on the keyboard and I'm just going to click that 97 bit there at the bottom. We don't want that bit there. OK, so we only want to copy to the end of these zeros. Yeah, we only want to the end of the line. We don't want to start overwriting anything we don't need to. So what we'll do, we'll do the same in our working file. Edit, select block. OK, so same again. And remember, our length was E002. It's going to select the same bit. Again, we have a little bit of the line underneath, so hold shift. Just click that little bit there with your left button and it'll deselect that particular bit. OK, we don't want to touch anything on that line. But what we do have now, we have everything selected that we need to overwrite. OK, so what we're going to do now is from our working uh, bin, we're going to go edit copy. We're going to go back to patch.bin. And then we are going to edit, paste, right. So there's two options, paste, insert, paste, right. Paste, insert will essentially tag the bit we've pasted after this block. So it's going to expand. That's not good, OK, because that's just going to make things worse. We need to make sure paste, right. Paste, right will overwrite the bit we have highlighted, the bit we have selected. So we're going to go paste, right. And there we go. So the changes we've made to the file are now in red until we save it. Once we save it, this red text will go black. So for now, don't save it. OK, what we'll do is we'll go back to the top. So our original address, f 1 f Remember our original address where the corruption started. Let's go back up here and you can see now it started C3 and it was full of zeros. Well, now it says 4A and it's full of this code, the same bit. In 1.62, we go to see 4A. It's full of this code, okay? As is ours now. That starts 4A, full of this code. Fantastic, wicked. Okay, we've done that bit. So what we can do, we can save it. And what we'll do is just to prove that that has fixed that particular part. Let's go back to our nor validator, and I'm just, oops. A shortcut. I'm going to paste that copy of our file. So at the moment, we've still got corruption. Yeah, they identified four bits of that container that are knackered. OK, so we've just fixed the first one. So if this is good, it shouldn't identify four bits now that are knackered. It should only see three. 
Okay, so what we'll do, I'll just delete that binary file. Uh, de -de -de. Still open, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so what I'll do is I'll close BWE. Let's try that again. There we go. Right. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll rerun this. So you don't have to do this uh, at the end of each line. I'm only doing it to prove that we've fixed that one particular part. Okay. So remember, um, we had four danger sections originally. We should only have three now, if this is good. So let's validate again. So it's still going to see danger on uh, Core OS alternate version. But it's going to give us a new HTML file that's scanned from our patched.bin. And obviously, the first part, the C30, should have disappeared. And we should only have three sections now that are knackered. So I'm just proving to you that we've that we've done something good here. So calculating statistics. It's going to take another couple of seconds. Do you want to submit to research? No, because this is just a test file that we're messing around with. Okay, so as you can see, we're going to come down here. So it still thinks it's 1.61, which is fine by me. So we're going to come down here. And remember, so remember before we still had this UNK dynamic section 50 warning. We can ignore that. We come down here. There you go. So core OS alternative validation. We only have three dangers now. And remember our C30 has gone completely. That is not there now. Fantastic. We fixed that first part. All we need to do now is go and fix the rest of it. So I will remove that and I will delete. Well, I'll close BWE first, obviously, because otherwise it's not going to allow me to delete it. So I'm just going to remove our patched.bin because that, that was just a test to prove that what we've done there is, is, is correct. Now then, on our original file, remember, we now have this address, F10 triple F. And this is a longer bit, this. This is F002. This is an even bigger bit. So it starts 7B, it's full of zeros. Let's go have a look. So patch.bin, search, go to, offset, F10 FFF. Again, hex and offset relative to begin. Okay. And again, same down here. It's on the last line. Start 7B. Let's uh, scroll the window. I really wish it would put that to the top of the bloody window. And as you can see, big old bit of zero again. Let's have a look in our working file. Search go to. Offset is good because obviously we've just put it in. Section starts 4D. Come down here though. Oh my word. <laughs> Full of code. That's definitely not right, is it? So something has erased a big part of our flash. No wonder it's not working. So what we're going to do is the same as we did before. So we have our cursor in F10FFF. Remember how the grid sort of works, how we explained. Okay, so we're going to have our cursor in there. And it goes on for the length F002. And we're going to basically select block length, paste it in, say OK. Again, we have an extra bit here on the bottom of this line. So shift click. Deselect it. OK, so we have that block of code. We can edit, copy, come back to patch.bin. Uh, we can edit, select block. Again, our length was F002. Now, again, it's going to select this little bit down here. OK, what you can do, you can, you know, we've shown, you know, we can shift click this last little bit here. OK, <laughs> he says. <laughs> it's making me out to be a liar. There we go. If you, have, you might have to retry it a couple of times, but it will work. OK, what you can do instead if you want, is you can select block and just just reduce the number by one. So you say in F002, 
as you can see there, we have F001. So you can just decrease that number by one, okay? And it will select the appropriate bit. Whichever way, or like I say, you can just shift left click and it'll deselect it. But either way, so remember we had this section selected in 162 working.bin. I know I copied it, but I'm just going to do it again. Come into, back into patched, edit, paste right. As you can see, that big section now, no longer zeroed. It's, it's nice and it's full of code. So let's go back to go to search go to back to our original address. We can see now it starts 4D and it's full of code. Now as before, we had 7B and it was blank. Excellent. The same bit in our working 162. Let's go have a look. Search go to back to the original address. Starts 4D, full of code. Excellent. That bit's done. So we can save patch up bin. So that's two areas of corruption down. Let's go. Let's go hit the third one. Address F20 triple F. F20 triple F. So again, same as before. Search, go to, paste our address in. X and begin the selected. OK. Again, appears at the bottom of the window. It starts 67, which I think is right. Uh, yes, it does. 67, followed by a ton of zeros. Again, for length F002. Big old block of code. Wow. Okay. This is some seriously nasty um, corruption that's gone on in this instance. Okay. So as we can see, yep, it's full of zeros. Let's go to our working file. Search go to. Again. We've already put the offset in. It remembers it across files, so that's cool. Saves us a job. Starts 50 in our instance and goes all the way down. Okay. So remember, uh, length is F002. So select block length F002. Now remember, it will select that first bit on the line below what we need. So we can either shift click or we can reduce that number by one. So we're going to go from F002 to F001. So, okay. And as you can see now, it's only selected up to the very end of that line. We don't have this little straggly bit here. Okay. So that's whichever way you prefer to do it, but I've shown you both ways. Okay. So you can go edit, copy. Let's go back. Let's, uh, let's go back into here. Select block again. Remember, F002 minus 1, F001 is the length of code we're going to select. As you can see again, it's selected that entire section. We don't have the straggly bit on the bottom now. But again, if you'd rather do it the original way. Okay, so as you can see there, so what we're going to do, we're going to search, we're going to edit, we're going to paste right. Lovely. Okay, that's the third section done. And then we're going to come back in here and we're going to do this fourth section really quick. So F31 triple F. Let's find it. Edit. So let's search, go to, paste it into the offset, say OK or hit enter. We can see it starts 57. Let's come underneath. Again, it's full of zeros. <laughs> it's not great, is it? Let's go search, go to again. Remember, it remembers the offset across files, so we can just say OK. In the working file starts 07. Underneath that, it's a full of code. That's what it should be. So let's go back to our validator. This is for length E002. OK. So edit, select block, length. We know is E002. Remember, we can either do that and shift click to remove the straggle a bit, or we can reduce that number by one and it will finish selecting that entire line. Lovely jubbly. Edit, copy, back to patch.bin, select block. Remember, our length was E002 minus the one to get rid of the straggly bit on the next line. Enter. Select that whole block of code. Look, everything below it is as you'd expect it to be. So let's edit, paste right. Okay, save. 
Done. All four sections. Sorted. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's close this out. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll get a copy again of our patch.bin. So this is before we reprogram the PS4. Um, PS4 BIOS, YouTube, patched.bin. Remember, that's the one we've been working on. Let's paste this back in our BW PS4 No Validator folder and let's run the validator and let's see now what we get on the output of our CoreOS alternative version. Checking for latest versions. It's just going to do the normal thing that it does. It's going to give us the menu. You want to hit six and validate. It's going to go away. Let's just expand this out so you can see. Oh, look. The eagle eyed amongst you may have already spotted it. <laughs> okay, so calculating statistics. It's going to be a couple of seconds. Look at that. Okay, 482. One warning, which is that unknown section, 50. Danger, zero. Unlisted, zero. Do you want to submit it to BWE? Well, again, not really, because, you know, we've been messing around with this file. So there we go. And it has left us our patch.bin results.html. Not entirely sure why it hasn't opened that up for us. Why won't it open? <laughs> why won't it open? That's odd. Oh well, let's, uh, let's try opening it with a different browser. Let's try opening it with Firefox. I've never had it do that to me before. That's uh, definitely strange. Okay, so anyway, so we can see here we have our patched in section. Let's come down. Saved by the bell. Okay, so we'll pick this up where we left off. <laughs> It's the day after for me, but uh, as we can see here, the uh, Core OS alternative validation there now has a big green tick next to it. And we'll also see that the Core OS entropy has increased ever so slightly to 8.00, uh, which is within bound. We have a green tick there. Uh, Core OS final filler, everything else is green tick down here. So everything there now is looking absolutely lovely. And if you notice that um, the chorus per firmware area, um, all these here, all these bits and pieces are identical to what they would have been before. Um, so these haven't changed. So if we take a look at uh, area one, for example, and 28EF, um, it's the same here. And area two, 7428, uh, 7428. So you can see none of the sort of you know, particulars to this this machine have been changed at all. All we've done is purely patch this out. This has increased ever so slightly, but other than that, that's it. Everything is still within bounds. Everything is still happy, and we can see there now that that is great. And if we come down the bottom, just as we saw on the command prompt, we can see there that. Uh, we have 482 OKs, we have the one warning, which we know about and we're fine with. We have the no dangers, zero one listed. And yeah, that's it. We do have an MD5 there, which you can use to uh, you know, validate things with um, in future if you need to. But So uh, the statistics there, you know, entropy 7.53, which is within bounds. Uh, sections of uh, Fs, so blank space is 11.82%, which it thinks is pretty much okay, and zero, so blank space, you know, padding, for example, 2.45% uh, now. Uh, what was it before? Just out of interest, let's have a look, see what it was before. Um, yeah, you can see there, look, quite a bit, 3.16%, so it was warning us there, um, whereas now it's down to 2.45%. So 3.16 down to 2.45%, which is within bounds. So everything there looks good. So from what we can tell, 
um, that should that should be good to go now. So at this point, if you're using um, an alternative programmer to the TNC boards, uh, an SPI way, then this is where you can go away now. And you could use a software that's bundled with that programmer to actually do what you need to do. So to write, to erase the chip and rewrite it back. Um, that is now the next step. Now, if you're using a TNC, as I am here, then obviously this is where we'll carry on. So um, obviously my VM is having some issues with my, uh, my TNC programmer for some bizarre reason. Not entirely sure why. So I will show you here, um, you can ignore this bit, this is just um, me having to navigate to where my uh, SPI way installation is uh, on this machine, which is here. So spiway.py, uh, I do believe it's COM4 on this laptop if I remember rightly. Yeah, so there we go. So the info command pings the TNC to get the information about the chip that's installed in there, which is great. So we can see that that is doing its thing. Okay, so now I want to erase that chip. So this is going to completely obliterate any information that's on that chip. Okay, so this is important now because we have to be sure, you know, we have our copies of our originals. If all else goes wrong, we can always go back to where we were. Um, so it's important we keep those safe, and we know they're on here, so we're good to go. And it literally takes it seconds, you know, if that. Um, okay, so once we've done that, we can write. There are two functions on SPI way for the TNC. There's write and vwrite. Uh, write will simply put the information from our binary file onto our chip. VWrite will verify it. So it takes twice as long because it's having to read back what it what it writes to check that it's done it, but it's an extra insurance policy. I've never had an issue with it, so I always just go for write. And then we give it the, uh, the file name of the file that we want to write. And of course we have that on our CPS4 BIOS YouTube patched.bin. So we're gonna give it that file path and that file name. So C colon C colon backslash uh, PS4 BIOS. In our case, you will give it, you know, the name of the directory, the location, you know, the file name that you've particularly given it. This is just where I store my CPS4 BIOS YouTube, just for this example. Uh, Patch dot bin. There it is. Uh, and then say OK, so we hit enter. And that's now going to go away. And as you can see there at the bottom, it's just counting up uh, as it writes. So it's a 32 meg chip, it's a 32 meg uh, binary image. So this is going to take roughly sort of eight minutes or so, eight to nine minutes um, to actually do because it's over serial. So it's a pretty slow process. So go away, have a cup of tea. Do the crossword, whatever you like, um, and then come back when it's finished. So that's what we'll do here, but essentially that's it. So if you're using uh, a different programming device, obviously this is where it differs for you, but ultimately the end result is going to be the same. This, once this process is completed, we're going to have uh, a PS4 NOR chip with our dated uh, binary image on there, with the patch uh, in place, with everything fixed up. So at that point, that's where we can take this out of the programmer, resold it back to the PS4, and then plug it in, fire it up, and see what it does. So once this is completed, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to put this back in the PlayStation, fire it up, and then hopefully we're going to have a working machine. Okay, so this is the moment of truth. Um, we just fire the PlayStation up. And basically, it's just a case now of waiting and seeing if we've had any effect on the situation. So as you can see the system boots straight back up to the system software update. And you're going to get this please wait screen for a short while. But it should then start into the software update proper.
there we go. Again, sometimes if you um, get something slightly wrong, you can have it where it will just sit uh, at that please wait uh, logo indefinitely. So if you're sat there for you know a good couple of minutes and nothing seems to be uh, happening, then just go back and check your work again. Uh, but as you can see there, we are now into the system software update proper. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to speed this bit up until we get to uh, the same point as we were at when the original failure occurred and we'll just see what happens if it goes past and then providing it does we'll just go to the end of the update and then we'll see it boot back into the OS and hopefully everything's going to be fine. Okay, so this is getting up to where it failed before between 59 and 60 percent. And as we can see, before when it ticked over onto 60, it fell straight over with the error. And now we've we've got past that point now. So as you can see, we're rapidly on our way back up to 100 percent. So let's speed this back up and get to the end of the update process. Okay, so here we are at the end. As you can see, 100 percent machine goes down for reboot so at this point it's going to try and do the usual sort of tidy up procedure so it's going to go into the disk check utility and then it'll reboot further uh, one time and then it's going to try and boot into the OS proper and providing we've done our job correctly and it certainly seems at this point that we have then uh, we should be good to go so when you see this uh, at the same stage of your repair, don't panic. This is perfectly normal. Um, if it looks like it's coming up and down a few times, that's perfectly okay. It's just doing its thing, sorting itself out. As you can see, there we go. We're into the, uh, the disk check. And uh, it doesn't take it too long from this point. And uh, what we'll do, again, we'll... Uh, oh, stop. <laughs> I'm going to say we'll speed that bit up, but uh, it doesn't seem like we need to. As you can see, console goes down again for further reboot. And uh, at this point, then, this is where it should start to try and boot into the OS. Any second now. There we go. We have the PlayStation logo. And then within a further few seconds, we should see what we want to see, which is the dashboard return. And there we go, back into the OS, we're out of the update loop, we're back into the main PS4 system, into the initial setup screen, everything's done, we're good to go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so all that's left for me to do now is thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've learned something today and you found this useful. If you have, then as always, I'd ask if you can just hit that thumbs up and uh, give the video a like it really helps me and the channel and uh, if you haven't already and this sort of work is very much your thing then take a look at the other videos we have on the channel there's well over 100 of these uh, technical repair videos now uh, mostly for uh, video games consoles and things of that nature um, if that uh, if most of that sort of stuff is stuff that you like, then please consider uh, hitting that subscribe uh, button and dinging the bell, which will notify you whenever we post any future uploads. Uh, we do have some interesting PS5 stuff coming up. I have some uh, interesting PS4 stuff uh, coming up, hopefully within the next week or so, which I've been meaning to do for months. Uh, I just haven't had the time to do it, uh, but I'm really excited uh, by this and I think hopefully you will be too so uh, stay tuned for that and I will see you on the next video in the not too distant future so as always if you have any questions or any comments at all feel free to pop them down below the video uh, I do try to read them uh, where I can and uh, if you need any sort of uh, work of this nature yourselves, then uh, if you're in the UK or the EU, drop me an email to whiteyandrewpaul at outlook.com. That's my business email address, and we can get you a quote and things uh, for simple repairs for your machines. So as always, you've been brilliant. I've been Andy Paul. I'll see you later. Take care, and bye-bye for now. 
Many thanks for watching then, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate, and, of course, subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. We've plenty more content on there, and there's lots more to come.